Oh. Oh no. Oh god. Why? Why did I wait so long to return to my town? Weeds everywhere, bugs in my house, spoiled turnips. Oh god. No one remembers me. What you're seeing now is my town of Hatfield residing in the larger nation of Animal Crossing for the GameCube. I was hot and cold with this game from 2002 until 2006, despite what the townsfolk say, only to finally shut down Hatfield in lieu of the DS version of the game, never to return. Until now. No, seriously, right now. You're seeing the first time I've booted up the save state since I last shut off my game. You might be wondering, why bother reviewing a game that you obviously haven't played in forever? What's the point? There's a je ne sais quoi that saturates every aspect of this game, making it a habit for me for almost four years. Animal Crossing was the first social simulation game I ever played. The general gist for someone who has never touched an Animal Crossing title is as follows. You arrive in a new town, some swindler named Tom Nook sells you a house that you'll just owe him for, and you spend your days talking to townsfolk, being a patron of the arts, and trying to make money. The more things you donate to the local museum, such as fish, bugs, fossils, artwork, the more NPCs will want to move into your town. You can also sell these items to pay off your debt, but the overall goal is to exist. It's quite zen. Anything, much like in real life, is optional. Hilariously enough, socializing in this game feels a little cheap. It's mostly talking to everyone at least once a day to make them feel important. Oh, and also paying attention to what NPCs tell you, only to vomit the information back to get stuff from them. Listening to someone only for your own benefit, that's the true meaning of friendship. Animal Crossing is mundane, that's true. But there's beauty in this simplicity. Sometimes I need mundane with loads of collectibles and a cute dog to serenade me by the train station on lonely Saturday nights. I did enjoy supporting Blathers in the museum with the things I found in my town, and I had almost completed my fossil collection. But at the end of the day, I just wanted to pay off my damn house. It's like the only manageable debt in my life is the one in Animal Crossing. The game's real hook is in the passing of time. The clock correlates to the real time of day, minutes or minutes, hours or hours, and the game changed with the seasons. For me, this ranged from sweet, like when the first day of in-game snow for the year happened to coincide with the first day of snow in real life, to aggravating, like when I would log on too late and everyone would be asleep and the shop would be closed. Why do you think I filled my house with fish? Tom Nook needs better hours. Since the game worked on a real calendar, holidays were celebrated, birthdays, special events would occur in town, and if you were there, you got to experience it. But if you happened to have a busy day and didn't get your AC time in, you would have to wait another year. Unless you're some sort of cheater time wizard or something. You know, there is something slightly unsettling about a video game that continues with or without you. Sometimes I would find myself wondering what was happening in Hatfield while I was away. It was then I knew I had to re-examine my life. It's an experience. Make it whatever you want. To me, Animal Crossing for the GameCube was a game that guaranteed to give me 15 minutes of relaxed gaming at any point in the day. It was my unwinding game, but it didn't come without some feeling of obligation when I didn't make it into town for a few days or when I would go away on vacation. It's all the guilt of social interaction without the real people. So, I hope you have fun with this title for however long you played, play, or will play it. Just remember, Rossetti is watching you.